<laughs> How's it going? This is this is the Zach uh, uh, arc. Fuck. Sorry. Sorry. I, I got discombobulated. Ham boys. Ham boys. I, I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask Joey. Uh, you said you wanted to be on. Um, did you have much to say on the topic, or did you just kind of want to bounce off? I, that's kind of what I was gonna do. I already know Zach's story uh, a pretty good bit. He's explained it to me a couple of times, but um, I kind of wanted to cover it because he's uh, not just because uh, not not just because I feel like it's the you know the virtuous right thing to do, but um, I, since I kind of have I established this platform, I. I definitely, I definitely want him to say a story because it's important. Um, um, I, I'm not sure exactly how much I have to say on, uh, on like you know institutions being corrupt like this, and uh, you know uh, the victimization of males with regards to all this, uh, uh, like sexual assault and everything. I, I don't really know what to say about all that. I don't know what the statistics are, but uh, I, I don't know. Do, do you? Do you uh, have no, this anything to like, say about that? Or like, no? I actually first um, talked to somebody about um, like marital laws being extremely unfair and, and, and stuff like that. And he's like uh, big into MGTOW. And the, the, I had this conversation with this guy at BronyCon uh, 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 last year. And next year is my last year. Hey, oh, anyways. Um, yeah, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a lot to say because I'm fairly new to the topic. Um, but I'm fine with bouncing off of Zach and, you know, asking questions and uh, whatever, whatever the heck comes to me. <clears throat> Let me clear. Let me clear my <laughs> throat. Oh, jeez. Kick it over here, baby. Pop and let all the fly skimmies <laughs> feel the beats. <laughs> I'm sorry, Beastie Boys. Okay. Um, welcome to the Ham Boys podcast. I am your host, Super Plectrum. The gayest name on YouTube. And today with me, I have Joey, the indefatigable. That's What's me. Up, Joey? I, that is not his name. I was here. But I I wasn't here. I'm now I am. Hey oh. I have no idea how John's gonna edit this. It's it's <laughs> probably gonna be the the the, the stupidest fucking sounding uh recoculous shit ever. Uh, but once again, I am joined by uh, my my good friend Zach Freeman. Hello, how's everyone this evening? Doing fantastic. At the very least, I hope we're all doing fantastic. We're we're about to delve into some heavy issues, so uh, uh, maybe maybe afterwards, maybe not so fantastic. Uh, but we're we're doing. Uh, I, I suppose, uh, as Joey said, we're we're doing the Zach arc. And uh, we're we're delving into uh, some very special episodes of the of the Hamboy podcast, which will it wind up being some of our earliest episodes. So that might uh, it might uh, that that might paint us in a light that uh, we should not be painted in, uh, considering some of the things we have recorded. And Joey knows exactly what I'm talking about. Scooby Doo uh, episode, woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fucking Scooby Doo episode. Oh my god. Uh, I don't even want, I don't even want to get started with that, but uh, but uh, Zach, uh, we were we were going to discuss higher education today. We're not going to do that though. Um, instead, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about uh, about male victims of sexual assault, and we're also going to uh, m- uh, maybe get, uh, get more into uh, I I wish that uh, some uh, that, that Tabby and, and RB would be here for this uh, because it, it does relate to higher education. Uh, but uh, the corruption in higher institutions and and how that has affected you in a profoundly negative way. But uh, so if you, if you would like to uh, uh, start off on that, yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, this the, I mean, uh, my my story revolves around like how universities treat sexual assault, uh, how Title IX is adjudicated, um, all all of those things, and how it's organized and how poor it is at every at every level. So. Um, uh, I was sexually assaulted in uh, 2016 uh, by uh, a girl I was seeing at that time. Um, she was a traditional student. She was in her early to mid 20s. Uh, I was in my early 30s. I was an adult student. Uh, um, I found Oglethorpe University uh, by half and chance, and it's an upper level tier private university. That's a liberal arts university that caters a lot to business, like international business students law students, pre-law students, that sort of thing. Um, 
nestled in uh, one of the wealthiest parts of Atlanta, Georgia, Brookhaven, which recently incorporated into its own city within the city. It's very strange. And the politics of that sort of uh, come into play a bit later uh, in my story. And uh, after I reported the assault to the on-campus therapist, uh, I was immediately told to shut up about it. In fact, her exact words were, don't tell anyone, you will get in trouble. And that is exactly what happened as I continued to deal with the situation. I was stalked uh, by my ex. Uh, She broke into the apartment complex and waited outside my door for hours. Uh, continued to message with me, emotionally manipulated me. Um, uh, then she, when she couldn't get what she wanted, she uh, defamed me, destroyed my reputation, um, and uh, had horrible things written about me, supposedly by me, written out loud in the dorms, or read out loud in the dorms uh, by other students, and uh, um, had a lot very, pri- very private parts of me exposed. Um, to a lot of people, which is why I'm not afraid to do this anymore. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, get those private parts out there. Yeah, yeah, and and it is it is very much like that uh, because a lot of the things that are being written about me were were there was the, there were factual things about my sexual nature that were in them, but not factual that I didn't actually write them, and they were greatly exaggerated. Um, and uh, then as I began to officially file things and deal with other conduct issues with other students the administration took direct hand and covering up those conduct uh, violations um, and uh, they removed me from my private lease agreement they coerced me illegally uh, to sign out of my lease agreement um, then I became homeless for a short period of time gained support I'm no longer homeless uh, continued to come to class which perturbed the students the students went so far, they went through many different steps to try to harass me off campus. A lot of false accusations. They called me in like an active shooter. Um, that was actually the one thing that was handled well by the head of security because I wasn't swatted, which is what they were what they were aiming for. Um, but nothing was done to the students in response of doing that. And um, uh, eventually uh, this came to such a head, I took one of them to court and uh, I medically withdrew due to PTSD that I now suffer from my experiences. Um, I am still currently fighting uh, the university in uh, in every capacity. Uh, at least at least one federal investigation is actually on its way. It's currently uh, being done against the university for mishandling this so bad. Another one is pending. One under uh, Department of Education OCR for failure to uh, follow Title IX protocol and for uh, gender and age discrimination, and then another under the Clery Act for failing to disclose uh, conduct violations to police. Um, something that I, I, I wanted to bring up is uh, uh, with regards to the nature of this, it's not only just an issue of, um, of the fact that you're male and that you're a male victim and that you're, you're uh, the person who assaulted you is female, but there's also... Um, in terms of the wealth disparity, in terms of the wealth disparity, uh, somebody just joined and left. Uh, sorry, that kind of threw me okay. off. Uh, in terms of the wealth disparity uh, between you two, uh, that's also had a, a profound impact on this too, uh, because it seems to me that uh, because uh, because this person seems to have some some sort of influence. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, my attacker, uh, her, her parents are both wealthy and very wealthy and, and very well connected. Uh, on top of that, uh, one of the times I was uh, dealing with the issue both of my homelessness and like how I was being mistreated with uh, the dean of students at Oglethorpe, uh, she said to me, and I quote, with what attorney can you afford to do anything about it? Um... That I, I mean, classism is a huge part of it. Uh, and you're also right, it's not just that I'm male uh, and older. Uh, there are other victims from Oglethorpe, too, that were female. And it's the more traditional story that you typically hear that were also buried. And uh, while I was directly, like they told me, because I was, ma- because I was male and older, they had, they had no, um, what was the word they used? 
trying to think back. Um, they said that, that my safety was not their responsibility. I should be able to take care of myself. And if I were jumped by students, uh, I will uh, I'll also quote directly because I've had to replay this uh, in a courtroom environment and in other things uh, a couple of times. Um, uh, if, if the students jump you, you should take it. You're a man. You should be able to. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, do not fight back. We'll get you for fighting and you'll be kicked off campus. Um, so, yeah, but it's not just that. I mean, I've definitely been discriminated on those grounds, but there are other uh, victims too. And when I was popular, because I was actually really popular on campus for a time, um, other victims would come to me because I was an older student and there are fewer of us. And I was there all the time. I was a full-time student. They would come to me with these issues, and I'm like, so what is the administration doing? And they're like, nothing. I didn't necessarily believe them that the administration was doing nothing. I assumed that their youth didn't know how to like properly fill out like police reports and stuff like that. So I took them to do that, and then nothing would be done uh, afterwards. And I, would, I contacted them later, and they're like, no, I was told to bury it or I wouldn't have a future there anymore. I, all these wonderful okay. contacts the university uh, creates for students – uh, that it's very good at, the academic half of it is amazing, will be cut off from them permanently if they didn't drop the case. And in almost all these cases, the perpetrator was wealthy and well-connected. Right. Um, ha- ha- subsequently, just following up on that, have any of these people that, that came to you um, for assistance and maybe to try to you know fill out police applications or to try to seek the help that they needed um, have they have they been uh, successful in any regard? Absolutely not, and they're very afraid of the university. Uh, some of the other documentation I have are students that are just afraid to talk about it. Uh, I have one person who worked for the uh, school newspaper came to me wanting to write a story about what's going on, and then um, emailed and said, "No, I've been told they'll take away my scholarships if I uh, continue to write about this," which is illegal, by the way. It's actually a, a, a regulation violation for them to do that and a First Amendment violation. But they absolutely have. And it's not just in this case. Other issues like the food poisoning problems that were at the university that I have been on the news to talk about. Cab County health officials say nearly two dozen students got sick at Oglethorpe University. They don't yet know the exact cause. They do think it's something passed from student to student and not from the food in the dining hall. Channel 2's Carol Sparge is live at the campus in Brookhaven, but Carol, some students do not agree. They are signing a petition and asking for dining hall improvements. Well, Jovita, it's quiet right now on campus because they're actually on spring break this week. Oglethorpe University says while the students are away, there is a deep cleaning going on for two and a half days behind me inside the kitchen and the dining area. They are also addressing other concerns that students have about the dining hall. Some Oglethorpe University students say the only dining hall on campus has undercooked food and dated food. I have personally picked up rotting pears from the front of the cafeteria. A lot of my friends have gotten sick. I've known people who have been hospitalized for days, had to go to several GI visits. These students and others want a new food service company to take over the dining hall. They've had food poisoning problems? Link in the description, by the way. I will put that in the description of this video. Yeah. Link, link in the description. Yeah. I was on Channel 2, Action News, uh, to talk about that. Um, yeah, several students got deathly ill from food poisoning, and there was rotting food. I will also link you the pictures of the rotting food. I'm sure I still have them uh, that okay. I gave to them. And, uh, uh, yeah, um, when they when the new school newspaper wanted to cover it, they buried it. They buried it hard. Um, that's what they do. Um, it, it, part of it is the culture around Brookhaven. Uh, it's not like the rest of Atlanta. It's not like it's it's very much it's in ITP as we call it. It's in the perimeter of like the circle of the highways make around the city. Um, so it's considered inner city Atlanta, but in, it's sort of like a suburb in reality. And it's the wealthiest sector of ITP Atlanta. Uh, they all know each other. They're all connected. And they all cover for each other. It's why they incorporate in their own city is so that the police can pol- police their own community. And it's effectively to keep poor people out. Yeah, I'm only familiar with the hood in Atlanta because I lived there for two years. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I know nothing about this. Yeah, I, I but uh, I'm a poor I'm a poor boy from Albany just like you. And yeah, I, I, I know. <laughs> I, I, I landed amongst this opulent wealth by happenstance, um, and I was shocked at the amount of wealth that I saw. Um, like my for her birthday, my ex girlfriend, uh, her parents bought her access to Thirty Eight Special, the band. The whole band. 
privately. <laughs> that's fucking. Yeah. That's that just boggles my mind. Yeah. Paid for their, I assume their like hotel room and whatever, whatever that costs. They just did it, and uh, um, that was not like super uncommon amongst some. But there are pe- there are other poor people like me. Oglethorpe is, and they they have this on their brochures. They give out the most amount of internal scholarships and stuff as any other private university in Georgia, per- perhaps even in the top rankings of America. They get really high marks if you look them up. They're very highly rated academically as well as like getting bang for your buck. Job wise, they're really good at connecting with people. The reason why you'd want to go to university is Oglethorpe excels at. Most of their faculty are amazing. I've I have sat in on classes at Emory. I've sat in on classes at GSU and UGA, um, you know, which are all great colleges here um, in in Atlanta or in Georgia. Um, nothing compares. Oglethorpe is a tier above anything. Uh, in the classroom, what you take away from it, connecting you with work afterwards, absolutely phenomenal. But there, that it's paid for in blood. Straight, right. straight. I, mean, I was, I was actually, I was actually about to ask you. You, you it seems like you have a lot of really good and really bad things to say about uh, yeah, we, university. We called the, we called the university Hogwarts because it looks like Hogwarts. Uh, the history of the university goes back to the before the founding of Georgia, like the founding of the Georgia colony, and uh, um, wow. the newest one or the newest iteration of it is from. It's from the 1800s. A lot of the uh, uh, stone work looks like Oxford. Um, there's some renovations in the 20s, very 20s feel in, inside some of the buildings. Uh, so there's a lot of history there. Um, and it does. It feels like you're at Hogwarts, and it's kind of small, and everyone knows each other, and everyone knows the professors. Uh, and you get this wonderful one-on-one relationship with all your professors, and that gets you to be directly connected. Like... I did research on a piece of Japanese art that connected it to the Song Dynasty in China where the artist had actually like copied a Song Dynasty, not one for one, but had been greatly inspired by a specific Song Dynasty piece, did a presentation on it that was sent to the owner of this piece of art that was uh, on loan in our museum. The owner loved it so much, had it donated permanently to the university's collection, and to celebrate that, the Japanese consulate general and members of Shinzo Abe's cabinet were invited to Oglethorpe to, for a sake uh, tasting in honor of that transfer and uh, other things. And I got to meet them and other heads of state there. Uh, it was an amazing experience you couldn't get at any other university. Like, it would be so hard to do that, even at, like, an Ivy League, to be able to, like, rub enough shoulders for that. And I was able to do that. That's amazing. So great. Also... Um, I was told multiple times a day that I should die. Um, I was made to feel threatened by, by who? Multiple by by other students. I was I was made to feel threatened in uh, multiple classes. Um, uh, the professor didn't do anything about it, likely out of fear of his own career. Um, they would bring people who were not attending the class into a class that only had like four or five students in it um, to bodyguard and it physically threaten and intimidate me. Um, I had great fantasy stories written about me and read about me into the dorm in the dorms spread around campus uh, nothing was done and I was insulted in every step of the way uh, not only do I have my title line against my attacker which I filed in 2017 the next semester after the assault occurred it took them until two, uh, 2018 to open it up that only happened because OCR opened an investigation in the university and they hired a new title line coordinator um, and the, like the fir- one of the first days of her her her, jo- her tenure was reopening that case. We're only now in 2019 handling it. But what they decided to do was to dig up, mostly possibly falsify, a a Title IX filing that was filed against me, and then spontaneously open it up as more and more evidence was submitted that you know the sexual assault occurred, the defamation occurred, um, and. Uh, I've been, and one of the worst psychological things I've had to me is the gaslighting. I've been called crazy uh, constantly for uh, doing this, saying I'm making the entire thing up. Uh, I had to become, I hate to word it this way after saying that they'd called me crazy, I had to become paranoid uh, enough to do this. I began to record every day I was on campus. I uh, took my phone, got an extended battery, and just began recording uh, every day of my life since then and caught all sorts of crazy stuff on audio that I've been submitting into evidence and it, it, it didn't stop them for the longest time and it still hasn't um, one of the professors I cherished my mentor uh, said horrible things about me 
uh, when I got to look over the evidence in the case against me, which I was not allowed to submit evidence for. I was not allowed to submit evidence for traditionally. Uh, I had to fight to do it after the fact, but they ran the investigation without me and barred me from doing so um, by sending contact information to an email address they shut off and wouldn't allow me access to the student email address after I medically withdrew. Uh, and then uh, contacting my advisor while he was on vacation, knowing he was on vacation. Uh, and then we argued to get it back turned on. And then I asked for time uh, to talk to my attorneys uh, and get this sort of sorted out so I'd know what to do. And they wouldn't give me the time. And they just like breakneck speed broke through artificial uh, deadlines as I desperately tried to submit evidence and meet with them. Uh, to be interviewed and be a part of the process of my own defense, and they refused to let me. Uh, but I looked over my my mentor's uh, inter- uh, interview. There were only two witnesses: they, they, my ex roommate and 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 him. And he utterly defamed me. And I recorded all my meetings with him, and he utterly lied about everything we talked about. Um, and it was so disappointing and devastating because I really looked up to him. Um. Something that I, I wanted to bring up, it, it seems to me like every step of the way, uh, there's there's people uh, either standing in your way or are like actively just trying to make you fail. Um, like fail in your cause and fail in what you're trying to do. And it seems to me like not just related to uh, what you're doing for yourself, but what you're trying to do for other people. Uh, you're trying to make a, an extremely positive impact on uh on your environment for this campus and 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 just for i mean i i hate to say this but for social justice in general um and like that puts a really bad taste in my mouth for a lot of reasons uh just mostly i just feel like that phrase is just a bad word um but what i wanted to ask you is um do you feel like uh because it, it's it it seems like it's coming from all sides do you feel like there is do you, do you feel like it's it's coming from any sort of centralized place because like immediately like one of the first things when we uh, when we were starting uh, you said you talked to a therapist or you, you said you talked to a, a, a counselor and sh- uh, she said to or they said to uh, like to keep this on the hush hush um, do you think that maybe this this counselor uh, might be also at risk? Uh, for possibly losing their job for coming forward with this sort of thing. Yes. So, um, so the, yeah, and, and and that's kind of the problem is that every uh, the council that that counselor was the on campus therapist, uh, and she yeah. and she was actually good friends with the uh, um, uh, the assistant dean, the vice dean, who entered my apartment and then coerced me out of my lease uh, later. Um, they do all know each other. Uh, the president of the university, President Shaw, um, uh, he. Uh, um, uh, he uh, uh, has attempted to build sort of a political career, has made political statements before as a, um, president of the university. And uh, he was personal friends with a student who was a felon, but no one knew about it. She went under a, a, a pseudonym most of the time. But you can actually, I'll give you the AJC article if you want to post it. So, okay, it's up to you. Uh, she, uh, yeah, I can put it in. Yeah, can put I can, in the we can put a link in. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, she committed a, a vehicular homicide and killed a mother. Um, she was high and wanted to commit suicide. Um, Shaw personally knew her father. Her father went to law school uh, with the DA. Uh, she was supposed to do, um, I think, a decade in prison she only did like six months and is on probation was allowed to go to a prestigious school because of her family's connections without any penalty um that's what they do when you're family friends you can do anything you can literally murder somebody and feel almost no repercussions so there's a lot of there's a lot of ties between these different people who are involved with uh the the faculty the families uh the various people who are uh, basically giving money to this university and are, and are providing uh, a sort of a veneer um, of uh, like cosmopolitan uh, sort of a nature. Like we have, you know, these rich people and these rich students coming to the school and we have these rich people backing us, these very well-to-do people. And uh, they, they seem to be trying to uh, cover each other up. Yes. 
And uh, okay, so like uh, going back to what I was saying earlier, do you think there is any sort of uh, central, maybe not a person, but maybe a group, a centralized group where all of this might be trickling, to, uh, trickling down from? Yeah, it's, it, it's, um, it's definitely from President Shaw down, some of the members of the board. Again, it's kind of like an inner family of people that are sort of connected. And, and if you're wealthy enough and you donate enough money that's or can, that, that it, it gets you into that circle kind of fast. Uh, but all these people have interpersonal relationships with each other. Um, nepotism is a huge problem at the university. Um, and it's been a known issue for a while as far as who gets who gets hired and where and uh, who gets promoted and who becomes department head. Um, it's 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 been kind of uh, quite a problem. Um, I, oh, trust me, I, I could do a whole podcast about yeah, fucking nepotism, it, and I hate it, it. It is, it is, it's disgusting. Yeah, and that, and it, and it's it's a huge, a huge issue. For a time, I had gotten myself in that circle. I became friends um, with these people, and they liked me because I came. I, I pulled myself for, up from my bootstraps, as it were, from Albany, and I had all these skills, mostly IT skills, um, that were useful to them, uh, and uh, I had these like sort of street smarts. And you know, I could I could be with them in in places they would not normally venture in Atlanta, um, and they found that alluring. Um, and I was doing really well academically and doing great things for the university, so I was very useful. But as soon as I needed something, basic protection that they were legally obligated to give me against one of their one of their own, all bets were off. My my identity, my person, my body, none of it was safe. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Going to need to uh, break intermission right here, and uh, John can hear this. I need to take a leak. Joey gets his own segment. He's high as shit, and he's got no bets. He's doing the left, and he's stepping to the right. Don't come up to me, or you'll get a fight. Yeah! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Joey segment of the podcast. I've got, like, nothing to say about this except, like, ah, shit, man, that sucks. Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess I've just sort of got questions, like, how do you, how do you, how do you deal with this bullshit? How do you, I mean, I'm, I'm not, like, naturally confident. I, without like my friends telling me that I'm okay and cool and that they like spending time with me, I'd probably be pretty, uh, uh, uh depressed to coin a term. <laughs> That's not used by all the kiddos these days. I'd probably be pretty like just not able to function a functional if I didn't have my friends and like with a whole bunch of people, like, calling me crazy um constant attacks from all sides like student body and like administration and then fucking a professor who i admired uh uh we're talking like a huge like this is the death of gods man this is attacks from every side it's 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 plunging into chaos um I don't know how I'd deal with that if I didn't have, you know, a, a, lo people who love me and care for me. I don't know. Just hearing, hearing Zach's story makes me reflect on myself and think that I'm fairly weak. All right, don't don't um, think that you're weak. I just came back. Just put my ear earbuds <laughs> back in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm taken by your story, man. I, I mean, I've been through a lot, and I literally had my therapist appointment today. So if you want documentation of the PTSD I suffered, I have two therapists, the a state-sponsored therapist, a county-sponsored therapist, and uh, uh, a rape crisis center I went to, and they're supporting me through this. And uh, it, I've been through a lot, but I've grown a lot through it. I know that I can survive basically fucking anything at this point. <laughs> yeah. But my, part, part of my story, though, is that anybody can do that. Like, you really can. It is within your ability, no matter how big or powerful someone is, that you can you can beat them. You can you can continue to, to do that. These are very rich, powerful, well-connected people that I'm fighting. And I've managed to convince 
a Democratic local representative to sponsor a bill to change the laws about rape. And I have managed to get uh, a federal investigation going on the university that looks very likely that they will lose at this point. Uh, so I have been able, from nothing with no resources and actually homeless, to levy blows against these people. Damn. Mostly I was smart. And I'm not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice, but in Georgia, one party consent state with audio. You can be the party that consents. I was actually going to ask about that earlier. I, I didn't know um, what what the, what the laws were in Georgia about recording people's conversations. Yeah, you, it is one of the most uh, relaxed places to do, to do that. So as long as you're in the recording somewhere and you're a participant, completely legal. Okay. So you can. I mean, that sounds fair to me. Yeah. So it's it, audio or video. You have to ask permission with some exceptions. Excuse me. But um, for for audio, it's it's game on, and I use that to well effect and record everything. You have you have this incredible device in your pocket that human humans have never had, with access to information on a, in an instant basis that humanity has never never had access to before it is your greatest weapon use it it is so much more powerful than a gun can ever be um yeah yeah you know i you know i i i I wield it like a sword every day what i did uh if you look at my facebook photo uh you'll see i'm wearing a blazer and people thought i was a professor all the time because i I have a blazer there's a reason why i wear a blazer has a breast pocket and uh because as a breast pocket, I could just flip my phone on record and put it in my breast pocket all day. It's comfortable and it's a perfect height to record audio. All right, <laughs> that that definitely works. Yeah. What like what, uh, what kind of phone is it? Is it have a, like a, a really this, good microphone? This is this is a old ass Galaxy S five because I'm poor. It has a replaceable battery. I have the extended batteries with it. I have replacement batteries. I carry in my backpack every day and an extended battery charge, which all was very cheap for me to obtain. Um. So it, it just it worked great. Didn't need any, anything fancy. Well, I'm I'm rocking the uh, the Galaxy Fortuna. Yeah. So uh, that thing's probably even worse than the Galaxy Five. Yeah. It, so you could do this on a Fortuna. You can do this on any smartphone basically. If you had like an old fucking BlackBerry, it would work. So you you could definitely do it. You can go get yourself a burner phone, and you can probably find a way to make this work. Uh, so all you boomers out there, pull out your T-Mobile Sidekicks <laughs> and just start uh, just start recording. Yeah. Um, I, I I'm sorry. I, I I I talked to my roommate for a second and then and jump back in and I heard you guys talking, so I didn't know what the uh, what the segue had gone into. So that's what I'm. But the segue is he said he felt weak. Do not feel weak. You could do this. You could win, and you have the power, and you have more power than human history you've ever had to fight a larger entity than yourself. And this, the access to the internet and a smartphone is an amazing magical tool. I'm curious to know, Zach. Like, what was your what was your like primary motivation? Like, what was the thing that that like you thought about? You know, in going to bed and getting up, like that that helped you, like keep your sanity and and like and like figure out how to retaliate. That that is a that that's a hard question to ask because my therapist asked that question almost every session. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, uh, but. Um, there's a lot of it, and uh, people shy away from things like anger. I learned how to channel anger because I come from Albany, which is one of the poorest places in the U.S., and I never imagined being able to come to a place like Oglethorpe. And when things were good, they were really good at Oglethorpe. And one of my favorite professors uh, took me aside from class one day and said, you know what, I'm going to sponsor you to go to Oxford. You can Damn. go anywhere you want. You're brilliant. I was like... I actually made it. I could have whatever I want. And then to have these rich, privileged assholes rip that away from me pissed me off so much. I wandered around Atlanta streets alone, not knowing what to do. And I was just so angry. Like, I saw red. And I was like, how do I win this? And doing something stupid, like shooting up a school like they tried to call me in, is not the way to really win. I needed to actually tell my story and really win a real victory. And that's like, that's what I, that, that's, that's what woke my, that's what, that's how I woke up every day. It was like every day that I don't let them win is a day that I win. And it's true because going back into class every day, 
I can see the anger on their faces for me just existing, and I continue to excel in classes. I, you know, my GPA did drop, and there's some makeup work that hasn't been counted in or something like that. My GPA dropped from a 4.0 to 3.7, and then after things factor back in, it'd probably be a 3.9. Um, I was in honors. I was inducted into honors. Uh, I was working on my honors thesis on uh, uh, Japanese politics during World War II. Um, I, I actually, the research I did on the Kano School Scroll uh, was done while I was under duress. Uh, from this. So when I went and met with the Japanese consulate, I did next to the president that I was currently suing. And we he had to eat that sh- he had to eat shit while we all shook hands in front of a camera. Um and that was that was a great moment not just for the academic success of that, but that moment that like you didn't make me buckle and you never will. I'm just going to say this right now. Fucking real men come from Albany. <laughs> you survived that shit. I, yeah, yeah. I, uh, like uh, uh, Zach, you remember this shit? Like w- when we were living in Albany, like everybody was like, "Oh, Albany is the black hole," you know? Like, oh, you, uh, you, like you try to leave and you get sucked back in. You remember that oh, shit, yeah, right? God, every all the time, all the time. Yes, all the time. You fucking like I I left Albany. Uh, God, I guess when I was like 26, like, I mean, I'm almost 30 now and like fucking like I, there's no fucking way I'm ever going back to that place. But like that, like Albany basically teaches you how to fucking survive. Like, I, I definitely think that that adds that, that, that has got to have something to do with definitely with your, with my survival skills and with your survival skills. Oh, yeah. Cause once, once you've been through fucking Albany, you can do fucking anything you want. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, the Albany survival skills totally came into play. I like to call it the Albany sense, like spider sense. And that's how I survive while homeless in the streets of Atlanta is almost no place in the streets of Atlanta is as bad as Albany. So I, I knew when the crack deal was going to go bad. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I can sort of, you can always see someone sketchy from a mile away. Uh, you know, you always knew kind of where the game was, uh, but yeah, no, uh, I've survived three home invasions. Um, you know, uh, numerous encounters with gangs and bullshit in Albany. Uh, just the general, general shit, and the general, the constant, pervasive, depressing feeling it is to be there, and there's no escape and nothing to do. It, it, you know, it, the everyday grind. And humidity. Yeah, like uh, the literally just 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 being alive in Albany for a day, like like surviving Albany, just being alive in there. Yeah, uh, like how we used to go over to Tim's place, and like he lived across the street from that that fucking crack dealer. Yeah, who would come over all the time. Yeah, I remember it, you remember Kendall, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, fuck, I don't know what he's doing uh, nowadays. He lives in Atlanta. But, like, he's uh, making six figures as a software engineer. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, he also made that's, it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's fucking dope, man. Yeah. Um, I, I remember, I, I just remember me and you and Kendall and um, I, I don't think Don was, I, Don would never fucking hang out with us. No, he's very uh, much a recluse. I speak with him occasionally, but to speak on Kendall's, uh, to speak, to, to talk up Kendall, Kendall's actually one of the places after I was on the street for a while, he gave me shelter for a bit. Uh, Damn. Yeah, really? He, he, he really helped me out in a bad time and I could never thank him enough. He, he was he was he was a really, really good person. And now now the people I'm currently staying with, uh, I sort of he I, I was you know, I didn't want to impose on him too much. I have I have my own room now in, in a house, um, not too far away from Brookhaven, a good part of Atlanta. And uh, I've been given shelter by some by some wonderful people, uh, who read my story online and was like, You don't you shouldn't have to suffer this without shelter. Fuck yeah, man! Yeah. I I don't even know what to say. I mean, I I went through. I mean, I I could do a I could do a whole podcast about my whole journey, uh, oh, getting sure. out of getting out of Albany myself. But um, I I don't know if I want to do that. Um, at, at least not right now. But I def I, I I definitely know like uh at least in part like not completely but at least in part what you went through. Yeah. Um, the uh the the only big thing, uh that that I want to ask you. Um, is like uh, where do you see, where do you see all of this leading? Um, do, do you uh, do you think um, there's going to be like some overwhelming success on your part? Um, uh, I would I would love that, but I, I want to temper that a bit. And we're going to talk about like the politics and statistics and stuff of this because I, I know all of this and fighting this. A lot of people okay. don't understand. I'm definitely- a, lot, a lot of people don't understand how these processes work and how uh, oversight works and what little oversight there is and how broken they are. So we could actually talk about like. 
like what is bro what is actually systemically broken in all of this so here's the deal I'll, I'll give the bummer news first and then temper it with other things the bummer is is i have this title nine the false title nine that's been levied against me by my attacker which as per rules and regulations actually shouldn't exist on multiple when for multiple levels uh uh it uh uh it's very likely because they're going to say whatever they want. They've already done it with one of their Title IX against one of the other harassing students. They'll make whatever determination they want. After an internal appeal that goes to the president of the university, who's just as corrupt as we've, we've you know, already talked about it, you know, at this point, um, you know, the Title IX sticks with you forever, and there's no appeals process and nothing to do about it. So it's very likely that it'll be difficult for me to pursue my ac academic career regardless if I win anything else. Uh, there have been people who have successfully sued major universities uh, because they were totally and utterly wronged and that still doesn't go off the record uh, they've won millions of dollars and you know their, their stories have been told the few people who will tell it and uh, it doesn't win anything so I may my hopes and dreams of becoming a, a, a Ivy League or a high end a university professor and a professional academic may actually be over but the silver lining is is that I actually don't care about that as much anymore. This fight that they started is what drives me now. And I I would I would now much rather not have that and change this broken system and how this works than have than 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 lie about what happened and to, to get a degree. I would never I would never be able to to take that job and go in every day and enjoy it and be enriched by it if I knew it came at the cost of every one of the other students that I would be charged with I charged with their safety and know that they're fundamentally unsafe I would make me a horrible professor if I knew that that could happen to any of my students and I have been a teacher I've taught classes as part of my uh, honors work and I taught ESL to refugees and I know the importance of the safety of the kids and other students that are under my charge and um, I couldn't live with that so I, I'm okay if, if I don't get the title and the fancy piece of paper if it means making it safer for everybody else. Um, but so here, I, go ahead. If, I, if I could jump in, I, I think like that kind of that kind of spirit lies at like the heart of the problem is that like you're you're sacrificing a lot to, to go through with this. And it's difficult to, to make that sacrifice to like throw away your your any like potential career opportunities or something like that. To, to be able to do the right thing to try and embody justice in the world and I think that like you know that's sort of like the vice that that's uh, that lies at um, the bottom of every person that's wrong to you is that they they have this difficulty with you know um, um, doing something that's harder with doing something that's sacrificial and so they, they, they take the alternative route, which is to fuck you over. Right. And, and you are exactly right. In fact, you speak to exactly what I went through Wednesday as I read um, uh, my mentor's, you know, a witness statement that was that was full of falsehood. Uh, was that you're right. That's exactly what he did is he I mean, I, I know what he's threatened with is threatened with the ending of his entire career, his whole life. He's an academic professor. He's a, he's a teacher at heart. He's an amazing teacher. Uh, my God, not only is he knowledgeable, he's just, he, he, he was an amazing human being. But I, I get that. Like, he literally has to make his car note. He has to pay, you know, at, even at the high levels uh, of that, you don't make as much as other high-end professions, especially not, you know, for the amount of education you need to be an academic scholar um, and a professor at that level. Um, and uh, all of that was about to be threatened with being wiped away and being blackballed from that. So I... I, I don't have the level of anger that a lot of people would because I understand what he was threatened with. I still think he made the cowardly move. It was still right. his responsibility to my safety in his classroom and out of it. And it was the wrong thing for him to do. He should be standing with me. And he has privately spoken to me about these injustices. Uh, he has talked to me about this happening to other students and how disgusted he is with it. At the end of the day, he didn't step in and try to stop it. I mean, he could have. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Um, but uh, if I'd like to move the conversation to a slightly different direction. So yeah. uh, other our audience might be asking, so how does this Tile 9 process work and what is this like? And you're about to be horrified at every level. So from the victim and the accused side, it is absolutely broken. So um, 
let's start with what Title IX is, and I'm going to blow everyone's mind. Title IX is regulation for sports. Uh, most of the what? documentation, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> most of the documentation deals with regulations with sports equality. Um, it's only later in amendments uh, and addendums that it deals with equal, gender equality, gender and race equality, and then other kinds of equality uh, in uh, between employees and students. And then only tacked further onto that does it deal with sexual assault and sexual harassment. Uh, so you're dealing with a piece of legislation that has had stuff stapled to it and stapled to it again. And some of the overarching problems with Title IX are difficult to get a, uh, to, to step away from because if you actually roll through it, there, there's like stuff for regulating like women's volleyball in there. And huh. <laughs> yeah, and it's stuff like for you know as so, as so many dollars that are invested in like you know sports that are male dominated, female women's sports are also uh, available for equality and stuff like that. Uh, so it's difficult to just rip apart the whole thing because uh, other cash cows for universities and, and other good programs for um, women and other people are also ripped apart by it if you just threw away the baby with the bathwater. The problem is the baby should be thrown away with the bathwater at this point because the entire system is broken. Um, the Title IX process, uh, you are not allowed to have an attorney speak for you. Uh, you can Why get a not? Title IX attorney. They can advise you, but the uh, complainant, it's the burden of the complainant, the student, the victim, to bring it against their attacker, the respondent. It's entirely on them. Uh, they get an advocate, which is a uh, person picked within or can be picked from within the uh, uh, university. Uh, but that person is probably not professionally trained in this. They're probably, like in my case, is the master librarian. He's a great guy. Uh, but, you know, and he, he has experience doing this before. But he's not a lawyer. Uh, and they can't speak for you either. So all the evidence, the opening and closing statements, at questioning the witnesses, that's on you. And it's like that both ways. It's, the back, it's like that for the accused as well. Um... Do you know but, why it is that this this is set up this way? Like what like historically led to this? Um, this it's setup? just a clusterfuck. It's always been a clusterfuck. So we went from because there's a moral hazard at play here. Universities are by and large private institutions that are in it for the profit motive, or at least are now in it for the profit motive. They don't want to hurt their image by any of this happening. Like you know anybody knowing about it. So you should just bury shit. That's why the Cleary Act ex exists. They would just, if something bad happened, they would just get somebody to hide the body. Um, and this was supposed to be meant to fix this problem, but it doesn't. It has been tweaked, lobbied, and sort of destroyed internally by the Department of People, the Department of Education, and universities that had their hands in the cookie cutter, or hands in the cookie jar. Um, they've, uh, uh, it, it's, it's made almost explicitly so it's such an ordeal that nobody would want to go through with it. And it's sort of like a casino and that the house always wins because the university gets to look at everything and has full unrestricted access. So in my case, with the university fucking me over so much, their, their epitus for continuing this is they get infinite free discovery of stuff that's related to uh, a case I could use against them. And uh, it's, so, it's so beneficial for them to do that. And then they could just line up three employees at a tribunal tell them privately to go yeah uh side our way no matter what fucking happens and then that's it you're fucked um you know and there's it doesn't there's nobody with like a vested interest to stop this from happening like the, the, besides the, like small fries like you the dear the dear colleague letter uh dealt with a victims and attempting to make universities take responsibility for that but now it's been weaponized uh, and there are also many people, a lot of them are on like the right side, you know, of political spectrum, but in this, they are correct. It is brutally unfair for the accused. They have almost no rights. Um, they have very limited access to evidentiary discovery. Uh, they can be blackballed out of being able to submit their own evidence fairly easily. And oversight is almost non-existent. I got OCR to investigate on my behalf. That is lucky. 
So I've been in contact with Andrew Miltenberg uh, and, or, and uh, Mark Hathaway, which are the top like Title IX attorneys in the U.S. Uh, I've had co- conversations with them. And uh, when I got OCR to open an investigation, I got a phone call from Mark, and it was literally like, how did you get that? So this is a guy who has successfully sued major universities for fucking over people who've been accused of Title IX. Like, that's how he makes his bread and butter. And he had almost never seen that. Uh, that's how hard it is. Do you, you know how you get that? Anybody else who listens to this who's falsely accused, wear a microphone every single day. Live in full paranoia. Trust absolutely no one. That's And also to... live in Georgia. Yeah, live in Georgia. That, that it's legally admissible for you to do that. Um, Except don't live in Georgia because Georgia is fucking terrible. Yeah. Well, Atlanta, I, I will I will vouch for Atlanta being an amazing place. Right? Oh God, I mean maybe you, I mean, ugh. okay, I, maybe for you. I, yeah, I've met I've met re- I've met really good supportive people here, so that's part of part of the deal. I've, I mean, you saw you saw the house that I lived in. Yeah, yeah, there are there are horrible parts of Atlanta, and there's the the dark side that is the wealthy part as well. So like every every place has those shady shady areas. In, in on both spectrums, extreme wealth and extreme poverty. But I found an amazing supportive group of people here in Atlanta, and uh, I'm not sure I would have found them anywhere else as open as they were um, and as uh, uh, just amazing and supportive as they've been. Um, you just got to move to the Midwest, Zach. <laughs> yeah, well, that's you're, that's you're, the place for you. You aren't, you aren't the only person who suggested that. Um, yeah, the Midwest is fucking great, man. Yeah. The Midwest is awesome. But, um, um, but yeah, so Title IX is a complete shit show. That's how it sort of mechanically works. Uh, uh, you uh, get like a thing off of the school's immediate legal email system. Um, you're shuffled in. These accusations are, are made against you. You have almost nothing that you can say or do. Uh, you can be completely blackballed and you have no control for the accused. If you're the victim, you have to face your accuser yourself. And uh, there's almost no protections. You could, you could Skype in remotely. But you still have to answer all the questions yourself, and so, yeah. Are you, are you doing anything to to fix this ridiculous uh, farce so, known so, as Title Nine? So the first thing I'm doing is what I'm doing right now is telling people about it because so few people actually understand how broken it is. A lot of the people who talk about how broken it is are people who've been accused of sexual assault, and with that comes this label of they must be guilty. And it's sort of like, ah, oh, they just want to end protections, you know, uh, you know, for women against men is how it's typically painted. I'm here to tell you that it is broken for both the accused and the accuser. It works in absolutely no capacity. And there's a moral hazard for the university to interfere in the process at every step and make sure it's beneficial to them ultimately. It should not be the place for a university to adjudicate any of this. This should be for a courtroom with police officers only Mm -hmm. you know and i understand trust me i know because i filed three police reports with this and i've dealt with the shit show that was um that was that i understand that the police are not always on your side and many of them are corrupt and terrible and the ones that were connected in brookhaven they did um treat me like shit when i went to report it and i was belittled um and i was made to feel threatened uh but and I was told that they wouldn't do anything to an Oglethorpe University student uh, explicitly. Uh, and, but I was also told by a judge that he couldn't do anything about it because it was the university's problem under the law. So um, ultimately, and that plays problem. into the last podcast, yeah, right there. Account of uh, fucking accountability. That's that's what I kept trying to bring up. Yep, fucking accountability. Yep, and it all it all circles around, and then this will lead into higher education next time. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's, it's a complete mess. So the first thing is for everyone to know that title nine is not for you. Uh, You shouldn't be advocating for it. If you, if you listen to this and you're, and you're a feminist, uh, fighting for women's rights, um, it is not actually helping you. It, it will, it it will, will, if you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and you are not the wealthy party for the university, you will be run through the most re-traumatizing experience of your entire life where your attacker will be in full control and an entire institution will be there to protect them. It is awful. And then on the other hand, if you've been falsely accused, there is almost nothing you can do about it and you can be completely railroaded. The whole thing needs to be done away with. And they just need to restructure how all the rest of the like 
equal rights employees to students having you know women's volleyball all of that needs to just be resorted out in a better way separately <laughs> uh, um, but that's part of the problem there are other parts of the problem too like uh, a lot of people are going to ask well you can concurrently seek criminal charges for this well one a judge said that he was unwilling to take on the harassment because it was the school's problem the other is, is I can't uh, I can't charge my attacker with attempted rape because in Georgia, m adult males can't be raped. That's actually a thing. Yes, uh, it is. the The law is written, and we can again I'll link it in the description. I guess I'll uh, send that over. Um, gendered female only, penetration only. So uh, there are a myriad of other laws that you can be charged with, but if a woman. Has. Wait, wait. Is it is it rape if you're a guy and another guy tries to penetrate your okay. ace hole? S sodomy is what they'd be charged under. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's fucking it's, puritans. Yeah, I know, right? It, it's so broken. It's bad for everybody. I want this solved for everyone. Trans and if you're transgendered, you're just totally screwed. Like it's just it's at, it's not. There's nowhere for you to fit into any of the binary um, binary wording in any of the laws. Uh, but yeah, so the most I would be able to charge my attacker with would be sexual battery. It, would, it has a maximum of five years. Mostly you would do probation. It could be worked off your record. It's the same thing as shoplifting. And shoplifting is pretty bad. It is bad. I'm not saying shoplifting is good. Don't do shoplifting. But yeah. rape is not shoplifting. And that's what's yes. the way to do um, <laughs> It's it's awful, uh, and uh, hopefully we can get that fixed. But I don't know if we if we'll be ultimately victorious. But that's one of the many other things I'm advocating to fix. So going to court currently, if you're a male victim, is 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 a terrible choice, um, and is absolutely awful. Uh, and then finding support is terrible. Uh, you know, uh, most of the left, and I consider myself, just for disclosure, I, I, I guess I would consider myself in the in the left spectrum. Uh, I I have difficulty, you know, um, siding with the, the the right on a lot of issues. But this is one where, at least on a surface level, they kind of they have a lot of correct ideas of how broken the system is. At least if you're the accused. Um, so I, I thought this wonderful community in Atlanta, because Atlanta has one of the largest populations of 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 gay people, of uh, LGBTQ communities in, in the U.S. Um, we have an amazing pride, uh, some amazing programs here. Um, but um, I marched with them. I've supported. I've supported them. Uh, and I was like, "This is this is my time for you to support me." R radio silence. I've met. I've met a niche community that's been very supportive of me. But for the vast majority, of it's radio silence and sometimes outward disgust, based because yeah. I'm a, because I'm a straight male, straight older male. Uh, the hypocrisy is amazing, and I no one's willing to talk to me. And it's the hypocrisy is crazy because the topic of the day is toxic masculinity. They don't understand how they're reinforcing toxic masculinity by not being able to see the validity in male victimhood. It's it's the same cycle. You can't be a victim if you're a man because you should just be tough and strong. That's that is toxic masculinity, and. Uh, the left needs to uh, collectively get its ass together and, and see like everybody is a person too. That's the point is that we're all equal. You know, I think it's about attention. Like, you know, like straight white males have gotten so much attention for all of history and philosophy and the sciences and stuff. Let's pay attention to some other kinds of people. Yeah. I think and, that's where. It goes. And, I, and, I, and I don't <laughs> disagree. Uh, I, I did a presentation on female soldiers in one of my core classes, and I'm like, you didn't even know about this stuff, and you advocate for it, and that's the thing, you know, people have ta taken away women's power, and women have been some of the most badass soldiers in history, especially like the Soviet Union, World War II, some of the best snipers. Um, the Amazons are real. Um, they're Persian, mostly. Um, perhaps some from the Ukraine. Uh, but um, it's, uh, you know, it, it, I, I don't disagree with the sentiment. It's just that you have to keep in mind that everybody has a story. The point is that everybody should be seen on an even keel. And uh, I'm a person too. And I also deserve support. And this should never have happened. And you know what's sad? I just want to, this is not necessarily directly related, but just it's a thought that came up. Everyone will be shocked. Do you know what I actually wanted 
when I sat down to mediate, because we did mediation with their lawyers and stuff like that. You know, I'm sure everybody and their mothers listening to this, I'm like, man, you're going to be a millionaire by the end of this. Do you know what I really wanted? I really wanted everyone to sit down and apologize. Treat me like a human being for like five minutes. Give my apartment back. Say we're sorry. You know, they were the professors were so great. They were already helping me out academically. They, I would have had that. And, uh, you know, I knew I couldn't get my attacker under the law, but if she saw me as a human being, maybe there would have been like personal growth. Maybe these people would have seen why this was bad. Maybe we wouldn't have done this anymore and reformed. And I made that clear to them. So they're not just fighting for their money. I knew that they knew that this could have been solved holistically and we could have made the community better and the change that I wanted could have been done and they just refused. And they refused because of their just their, their bigotry and their sense of hubris. It, it's so disgusting, you know? I, 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 I'm honestly speechless. Um... Jesus fuck. Like like where do you think these people come from? Extreme. Like, what do you think extreme? Oh, like uh, no, I no I I get that. But like what do you think facilitates that? Like how like how do you come like like they're in this extremely liberal environment, which, like, uh, college environments tend to be mostly liberal. I, would you agree with that or not? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, Oglethorpe is incredibly liberal. It's probably the most liberal bastion in the liberal bastion center of, of Atlanta, which isn't... It's Atlanta... Is, uh, Georgia is known as a deep red state. Atlanta is weird. It is, like, more liberal than some of the most liberal places in the U.S. It's kind of a reason why I like it that way. Uh, in the center of all of this. Uh, and Oglethorpe is probably amongst the most liberal in that regard. Uh, we just okay. had uh, a chief justice, though uh, I forget her name. Mine just blanked. She was just a speaker uh, there, and one of the most liberal judges we've ever had. Uh, just, right. Justices. Um, so it's definitely a, a, a university for that. And the problem is, is that regardless of the label that you want to give yourselves, if you think you're fighting for social justice, a lot of people do it just for the validity and the attention and to give themselves a better image to cover up for the horrible ways they actually earn their money. You know, they're how okay. vested they are in to Coca-Cola. I might not be speaking directly to a specific situation or perhaps Chick-fil-A. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. Chick-fil-A, who is a hard right leaning company that has given money to pray the gay away um, stuff. Uh, the, C- the CFO of Chick-fil-A, I think it was also the acting president at the time, sat on the board of Oglethorpe for a while. Uh, it was rather disgusting, and uh, no one batted no one batted in the eye. No one batted an eye at that connection, so long as they all got to have their photo op as a part of the OU community to support trans rights. And there were trans students there, and their stories are valid, but it was paid for by Chick Fil A. And it was done. Hey, it was done that. Hey way. man, yeah, I like Chick Fil A. Yeah. I, I eat Chick Fil A sandwiches. You know, I Chick Fil A. Those are pretty so good, good sandwiches. They do make good sandwiches, but I won't respect a company that doesn't know how to make one on a Sunday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta respect them. You just gotta eat their good food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone just heard my girlfriend who's laying, laying behind me. She she just promised to make me sandwiches on Sunday. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> She's an amazing cook, so. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I, I like the Chick-fil-A sandwich, too. It's But they're, you know, they, these are people who will rail against how evil Chick-fil-A is, but they will totally accept their money, you know? But yeah. The hypocrisy I mean, is so, so, so blatant and so terrible, and I, it, it, it's, it's horrible because I, I, I agree with the surface level of their message, but they don't actually follow through and again part of it's it's yeah. hollow it's hollow because it's just image control you know and yeah then they we're and we're uh not to cut you off yeah. zach we're, we're getting a little bit off topic and we're also uh for me we're hitting that hour 10 mark right that's true. um um uh basically if you had any final points you wanted to uh go ahead and uh put in because i, I don't want to make this too extraordinarily long it's okay totally understand um if I had a final point, it's anyone out there who's going through this, um, you're not alone. Uh, one in six men are uh, the victim of uh, sexual abuse. Um, 
for any other sexual assault victim out there, you're not alone. And um, don't don't necessarily trust the employees at your university to protect you. You you I know this sucks to hear. You have to find the strength within yourself, but you totally can. You totally can be your own advocate, and you can absolutely survive this and fight. is what I like to call a final thought. Yes! <laughs> guys, guys help. <laughs> Br- Bryce is I was trying to peek I was trying to peek my audio on purpose because I've been watching like I I've been watching uh like I've been watching uh my uh my audacity for like the last hour now and it's just like just just uh, like this little small line and then when I talk, it's like this little, just like this little thing. And so I felt like I needed to like end it on like just fucking yelling, okay. just to give, just to give fucking John something to edit even more. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Uh, on that note, uh, I'm gonna spend some time with my girlfriend. Um, thank you guys for having me on and listening to me. We'll talk about more of this later and whatnot. Um, but thanks for having me.